What is up ladies and gentlemen, it is CJ the Cheese DJ here, back with another ARC video. And today we're taking a look at a day one base building starter set. So pretty much what I'll be doing through this video is showing you what you want your base to look like day one you start ARC. Granted, I will be building it out of thatch. However, if you manage to get up to wood in one city, just duplicate this build with wood. Now, a few things that I can tell you from my experience of playing PvP Arc is that you're always going to want to reinforce everything. Reinforce, always have backup of whatever you whatever you really need. And, you know, fill your chests with crap to deter players from raiding you. Once they find out that you have loot inside your base, that will just make them more determined to get into it and raid it pretty much. So, like I said, we'll be doing this day one out of thatch which is the first structure that you can learn to build with now i just want to say a huge thank you to all the subscribers who have come along you guys are amazing thank you very much for watching all the videos continue watching them and i shall continue making them for you okay so thatch like i said we've got some thatch foundations in here now you're not going to need many i personally this is it all depends on what kind of player you are if you want to go for more the stealthy approach but the first thing you're going to want to do on a PvP server that you've just joined is find a really, really shaded spot covered by many trees. This obviously isn't a very optimal location, but I just want to show you how best to build your base. Now, anywhere with a lot of trees will do. Actually, I'll take you to a location now to show you. Okay, so for example, somewhere like here. Now... Granted, the ground's not very flat, but you can easily, you know, work your way around it. You're just going to want to find a, obviously, a flatter spot. Now, you're going to want to start off, obviously, with your foundations. They are ceilings, whoopsies. So, you're going to want to try and put them in a place where you can best stack, obviously, more than one across in a line. Where there's not too much of a drop, and you can see, you can see there, there's too much of a drop now, and we're unable to place the next foundation. But if we come over here, we can place it. So, you're going to want to start by building yourself a 3x3 three three base. And we can't build that there, but for the purpose of the video, we'll be using, we'll just use ceilings here. So you're going to want to build a 3x3 three three to begin with. And if you currently cannot build a 3x3, three three, if you run out of time, stick with your 1x1. One one. It'll pretty much be the same kind of structure that we'll be going for. Okay, so now that your 3x3 three three is built, you can see that we're relatively hidden within the trees. For example, if we say come up here, and you know, not many people will obviously look around for these kinds of bases you can see you know there's there's not really a location you can't really see anything through these trees now another thing that you're going to want to keep in mind when you're building your base is to not harvest the trees in your base area otherwise that will stop them from spawning back in so you're going to want to take a little mule around and gather trees and resources from another area now you can see here we're in the air and you know we, you, your base isn't going to be noticeable if you build it in a secluded little section where, you know, there's lots of trees, lots of environment to cover your tracks, lots of, you know, big burly dinosaurs to also hide your base, you're going to want to, you're going to be pretty invisible. Now, we're going to kill this Diplo because it is going to annoy us for the rest of this video. So, like I said, you're going to want to build a 3x3 three three, and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make it too high. So you're going to want to make it too high with walls. Oh my gosh. Okay, give me a moment and we'll fix this up. Okay, so you can see there we're building it to a 2x2. Two two. Now, the reason why you want to go 2x2 two two and not by 1x1 one one is because you're going to have a little central chamber. And that central chamber will be your 1x1 one one in the center of the base. So you can see here we're able to build the walls around. Now you're going to save this for a door frame, obviously, to get into it. And that will be your main little resource section bit. So this is where you're going to be able to store your storage chest, your bed, as well as a few other select things like a mortar and pestle and that sort of stuff. So once you get this to three high, the re sorry two high. Now, like I said, the reason you're going to do two high is because if say someone comes in, breaks through your front door like that, and they see, oh well, look, there's a individual intersection. What they can do if it's a one by one is they can go up on the roof, which I'm sure they can easily manage to say if they have a trike or anything like that. They can stand on its back, jump up, get on the roof and just hack through your ceiling to get through it. That's the reason why you're going to make it 2x2, two two, because it's more base defendable, and it's going to make it harder for them to get in, which may deter them, because, you know, if they think that you're coming back to your base, or they see another player on a dino in the area, they're going to freak out, think it's you, and run away, unless they have a spyglass and can see your name. And then in that case, they'll probably continue. But this is going to try and keep them 
from getting in as best as possible. So like I said, you're going to want to do that. Now, another little extra detail that you can add to your base. Now, we said earlier that we couldn't actually build upon this properly. What you can do is you can put and swap out the center for a ceiling, and you can actually come under here and put a storage chest to keep all your really, really good stuff. So if you get like Ramshackle, Journeyman, anything like that, then the one thing that you're not going to want to do is put a wall where this roof is because then they'll know obviously you're hiding something and you're gonna, they're going to try and get down there. So, you know, people won't think to look where there's a roof being placed. So you've also got to keep that in mind. So what we're going to do now is we are going to quickly get this finished off. So you can see that you've got a little, little, this is your cubby house. This is your safe hole. This is where you're going to want to spend most of your time. And, you know, then you're going to want to obviously reinforce everything. So finish off the walls, finish off the ceiling. I won't do it in this video because it's just a bit of a waste of time. You know what the process of building looks like. So you're then going to want to stick your door frame here. And then I'll show you what you can actually get inside this little one by one. Okay, and we've finished what it looks like. And you can see it's still pretty conspicuous. If you come up around, you know, a few rocks, a few trees, you can see it's, well, you can't exactly, you can't see it. So, you know, I doubt anyone will be wandering through the wilderness on purpose looking for a base, which, you know, this is why you want to pick a heavily dense tree area because they won't actually find it until they come square right up to it, which, you know, that, that's a bonus because obviously you want to deter as many and stay away from as many players in PvP as you can. Now, I'm missing a ceiling out there. I kind of ran out of pieces to finish it, but that's okay. Okay, so this is our little hut. You can come in here. You can see you've got a bed. You've got two storage chests. You've got two modern pestles. You know, you can fit some nice stuff in here. You've got plenty of space. Well, not really plenty of space, but you've got plenty of storage space for what you need at a level, say, 1 to 30, building up their selection of items. Now, like I said earlier, you can have an under base storage tote, but as well as that, you can have a top base storage tote. So what you can actually do is you can demolish this thatch wall and you can actually stick a ladder here, climb up here and stick stuff in there as well. Granted, it's less secure than say under the base, but you know, it still can store things for you if you really need the space. Although I wouldn't really recommend it because once they see that you've got this kind of structure, they will probably go through the roof for it and, you know, if they find your loot in there, they'll keep going because, you know, they'll get a taste for it and keep going. Now, you can also stick storage bags under your base if we come over here. Granted, it is slightly elevated on the ground, but like I said, you can put storage chests. You can see here, it goes pretty far back. So, if you know, you can stick that there, get all the way down and place it. And that's directly underneath. You can see our two storage boxes there. You can easily fit plenty of space in here for storage boxes. Now, as well as that, sleeping bags can be placed here. You can see we've placed one just here. There we go. You can see it's placed there. So, you know, if you ever do get attacked, chances are they're not going to see that sleeping bag in this thick, dense forest. Although, if they have their graphic settings really low, then they probably will see it. But, you know, still, you can easily hide them in the, in the wood, in the forest. So, you know, if you do get attacked, killed, you can spawn in at your sleeping bags and, you know, do your best to get your gear and run or, you know, try and fight off the attackers. Now, once you get a little bit of dinos, and, you know, obviously I would start off tending with a few dillos, maybe an iguanodon or a trike. You can fit the dillos in here quite comfortably without having to worry about them getting too much in the way. And they will, obviously, blind attackers coming in and trying to raid your base. Granted, they have to be on foot for them to be blinded. And it does affect their dinos, but they can hop off of them and still come in. Now, obviously, once you level up a bit further and you get into the refining forge and metal stuff, you can obviously fit a refining forge and smithing in here quite comfortably as well. But you're obviously going to want to upgrade your base to wood, stone, and metal henceforth. But I will have separate videos showing the next level up tiers of those bases, and you will see me doing them shortly in my new survival series that I have coming out. So that'll be it for today, guys. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, let me know down below. I would appreciate it, just so I know whether to continue making these bases for you guys or not, and then you guys know about these little tips that can probably help you a bit in ARC. If not, hopefully you found them useful. Um, but yeah, guys, other than that, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.